Hello friends, this video on structural organization of animals part 36 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So this is how the process of digestion takes place in frog. Let us now look at the circulatory system of frog. How blood circulation takes place in frog. So let us now see how the absorbed food is transported to different parts of the body. Because we saw in our previous slide that the food which the frog eats that gets digested and the digested food is absorbed in the intestine. But now it has to reach different parts of the body, right? So that transportation is facilitated by the circulatory system. So when I talk about circulatory system of frog, they have a closed circulatory system. That means the blood is confined to specific tubular structures called blood vessels. And we do not see organs floating in blood. So what constitutes the circulatory system? What are the different organs which together form the circulatory system? Heart. Blood vessels, blood of course, lymph, lymph channel, lymph nodes. So these are some of the things which together form the circulatory system. Now you might be wondering, we have blood, we have lymph. We have both of them as two separate things. Now in animals with open circulatory system, for example the cockroach or any other arthropod, what happens is blood and lymph are mixed together and that is why we call it hemolymph because blood is not confined in vessels. So blood is present in, all, in the entire body cavity, lymph is also present in the entire body cavity. But in case of organisms where we have closed circulatory system, both form separate systems. So blood will form heart, blood vessels and blood. These three things together will form the blood vascular system whereas the lymph, lymph channel and lymph nodes together will form the lymphatic system. Now when I talk about blood and lymph as two different things, what are they? Now as we talk about, we have talked a lot about blood. We all know what are the different components of blood, what is the function of blood. Now talking about lymph, lymph is a colorless fluid. Unlike blood, it is not red in color. But this also helps in transportation of lipids from the digestive tract. It also helps to return fluid to the circulatory system. Lymph plays a very important role in combating disease, in fighting against infections. So that is where the lymphatic system plays a very important role. So now you understand for organisms where you have closed circulatory system where blood and lymph are two distinct things, there you have a blood vascular system and a separate lymphatic system. So now here we will concentrate mostly on the blood vascular system to understand how the blood circulation takes place in a frog. Okay, so when I talk about uh, a circulatory system, what do I mean by circulation? What are the basic things that are needed for circulation? First thing, what needs to be circulated? The answer is a fluid needs to be circulated throughout the body. So the fluid here we'll talk about is blood. Who will circulate this fluid? So for that we have blood vessels here. So blood vessels are going to circulate the blood. Now the last question is how will this get circulated? The answer is with the help of a pump and the pump is heart. So heart is going to pump or uh, allow the blood vessels to carry the blood and then the blood vessels will carry blood to different parts of the body and that is how blood circulation will take place. So let us look at it into detail. Let us first talk about the pumping organ that is heart. It is a muscular organ located in the upper part of body cavity. So this is how the heart of a frog look like. It is the pumping organ. A muscular organ, since it has muscles, the muscular contraction and expansion will actually help in pumping the blood. That is why it is a pumping organ. It is differentiated into three chambers, two auricles and one ventricle. Now all of you are aware of the structure and function of human heart. We have talked about human heart in detail in class 10th. So we all know that inside the human heart, 
it is divided into four chambers two auricles and two ventricles but here if you see the heart of a frog it has only three chambers two auricles and one ventricle <clears throat> as we all know auricles are the receiving chambers whereas ventricles are the pumping chambers you remember we i gave an abbreviation for this AIR that is auricles are receiving chambers so air similarly VIP ventricles are pumping chambers remember this right this was a memory tip given while we were talking about the human heart okay so now we will see how exactly the heart but I mean how exactly the blood circulates so for now you just understand this that if this is your heart you have two auricles this is your right auricle, this is your left auricle and this is your ventricle. So you can see three chambers. This is one chamber red color, this is another chamber red color and this is one chamber that is one single ventricle. Correct? Okay. Now there is a membrane which covers the heart and that membrane is known as pericardium. Cardi cardio word is related to heart. So pericardium is a membrane which covers the heart because heart being such a crucial organ of our body, it needs a lot of protection. To provide that protection, it is covered by this membrane pericardium. The next is the blood vessels. When I talk about the blood vessels, we'll talk about two main blood vessels that is arteries and veins. What are arteries? These are the blood vessels which carry blood from heart to different parts of the body. So all the arteries together form the arterial system. So arteries basically carry, since it carries blood from heart to different parts of the body, so they carry oxygenated blood. So arteries carry oxygenated blood. What do we mean by oxygenated blood? Blood which is rich in oxygen. So that is the good blood. That is the blood which all other parts of the body needs. Because why do why do the part different parts of the body need blood? They do not need blood. They actually need oxygen because they want to carry out all the cellular processes within themselves. So they need oxygen. How will they get oxygen? The oxygen will reach them by getting dissolved in blood. So blood will reach them so they will absorb of oxygen from the blood so oxygenated blood is something which different parts of the body needs so arteries carry oxygenated blood from heart to different parts of the body now there are another type of blood vessels called veins they carry blood from body parts to heart now let us suppose let us let us take a very I mean rough example let us suppose this is the heart Okay, so heart gives out oxygenated blood and it is carried by the arteries. So arteries take oxygenated blood from heart and it takes it to different body parts. Now inside each of the body parts, maybe inside our hand, our finger, our mouth, everywhere, all the process of cellular respiration and everything will take place. But after that, some waste materials will be produced. At the end of every process, some waste materials will be produced. So where will that waste material go? That waste materials will also be mixed with the blood. So that blood which has less oxygen and more impurities or excrete, I mean the, the excreted products, that is the deoxygenated blood. So the body will give out deoxygenated blood. That is the blood with, which has less oxygen but more impurities. So this deoxygenated blood will be carried by the veins and the veins will carry it to the heart. Now heart will then again give oxy so the conversion of oxygenated to conversion of deoxygenated to oxygenated is taking place within the heart what is happening what is that magic inside the heart that deoxygenated blood is going to the heart but oxygenated blood is coming out from the heart right so we will see that we will see that blood circulation in detail in the next slide so for now you just understand the different parts of the circulatory system so what do we see arteries carry oxygenated blood whereas veins carry deoxygenated blood
Now let us look at the third component that is blood. As we all know, blood is composed of some of the essential elements like blood plasma, RBC that is the red blood cells which are also known as erythrocytes. They are nucleated cells that are cells with nucleus and they contain hemoglobin because of which they are red in color. White blood cells which do not have hemoglobin and they are also known as leukocytes. They help in fighting infection. So whenever we catch cold or we get fever or something like that, even before we take any medicine, our body itself try to fight against that infection. So sometimes you would have observed that if you get some mild cold or mild fever, I mean it becomes okay on its own even without taking any medication. That's because there are few cells inside our body which are constantly fighting against infection and they are the white blood cells. And then the fourth one is the platelets or the blood platelets which prevent clotting of blood. Because of the presence of these platelets, when we get a small cut, the bleeding doesn't continue for indefinite period of time. It stops after some time due to the clotting of blood. So all these things, those are the blood and its components remain the same in case of a frog as well. Now the question is, why is blood circulation needed? Why are we talking about all this? That's because blood transport nutrients, gases and water to different body parts. So basically it, can, it uh, transports all that different parts of the body needs and it also carries the waste products from different body parts and send it out of the body. So that way is also it helps. So let us now try to understand the circulation process in frog. What exactly happens in this process of circulation. Now as I already mentioned if let us suppose this is the heart of the frog which is divided into three chambers right auricle, left auricle and ventricle. Fine. Now what happens is that from different parts of the body now, so many life processes are taking place here, so waste products are there. So they give out deoxygenated blood. So this deoxygenated blood is carried by the veins and the veins bring it to the receiving chambers, that is the auricle. So they bring it to the right auricle. Right? So right auricle receives the deoxygenated blood from different parts of the body. What happens to the left auricle? Left auricle is also a receiving chamber because auricles are receiving chambers. So what will the left auricle receive? Now the left auricle receives oxygenated blood from the lungs or skin in case of a frog. So in frogs, they, they have lungs, they also have skin which acts as their respiratory organs. So the respiratory organs, what is their function? Their, or, their function is to absorb oxygen. So these are the respiratory organs. So, from the, so they have a lot of oxygen. So this oxygenated blood from the respiratory organs come to the left auricle. So the left auricle receives oxygenated blood and the right auricle receives the deoxygenated blood. Now what happens? This left auricle sends the oxygenated blood to the ventricle. Right auricle also sends the deoxygenated blood to the ventricle because ventricle, what is ventricle? Ventricle is the pumping chamber, VIP. So what will ventricle do? Ventricle will pump the blood out of it. So where will it pump? So this will pump the blood So this ventricle will pump out. Now inside the ventricle you have both oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. So ventricle will send out the oxygenated blood to the different body parts because different body parts need oxygenated blood. Right? So who will carry this oxygenated blood? This will be carried by the arteries. Now what will it do with the deoxygenated blood? Ventricle will send the deoxygenated blood to the lungs. What will the lungs do? Lungs are the organs which perform this uh, 
this um, process of respiration so during the process of respiration they take in oxygen and they give out carbon dioxide correct so the deoxygenated blood is sent to the lungs so that during the process of exhalation they can send that out so the deoxygenated blood is sent to the lungs because lungs act as the organs which will send out the deoxygenated blood and it will take in the oxygen so it will take in oxygen and it will throw out carbon dioxide so that will be done by the lungs so this is how the blood circulation take place and this is how the oxygenated blood reach different parts of the body and deoxygenated blood is taken away from different parts of the body and sent back to the lungs or to the skin so this is how circulation process happens in a frog. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.